Pikachu. Hey, you mean so much to me, look at you. You got yourself a movie, you're a detective. And so now I've got to give a curb blog all about you on this day. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the lovely, happy, merry, holiday-filled month of Pokesember. Uh, for like the third or fourth year in a row, I'm doing this now. Somehow, no, no, by, by no small mystery, I, it just there is always a plethora of Pokemon-related content uh, to talk about every year. Um, this year, not the least of which, it's funny, on the day that this is going up on uh, December 1st, <laughs> I'm going to be out watching uh, the 21st Pokemon movie. Uh, which uh, w- w- was having a small release in theaters, and uh, which I'm very excited about, and I'll be having a video about that in the future. But, of course, as far as Pokemon and movies go, the thing on everybody's mind right now was uh, based on a little trailer that dropped uh, only a week or two ago uh, for Detective Pikachu, uh, the American-produced uh, Hollywood big-budget Pokemon movie that's going to be coming out next year. And uh, considering, you know, it's a big deal and people want to hear about it and everything, I figured, well, who better to talk to than Detective Pikachu himself? <laughs> so I'm joined uh, by the lovely... Oh, God, you got Ryan Reynolds? <laughs> Can you believe it? Finally, I got... I, I really, you know, I, I had to work really hard to get him. But Holy no. crap, that's really <laughs> impressive. Oh, th- thanks, man. I, I, I try. No, I, I am joined by, uh, a, a, in my mind, the actual voice of Detective Pikachu. <laughs> uh, not, nothing against the lovely Mr. Reynolds. He's, he's very talented, oh, and I'm sure they're great. But no, uh, the, the, the good Mr. K.G. Tang, um, who not only is Detective Pikachu, you know him from 20,000 other things. He's in Fire Emblem. He's in, he's in Fist of the North Star. He's in a billion anime shows. I, I, I mean, that could take like 15 minutes just to go through everything you've done. <laughs> but uh, you know, but thanks for joining. Hi, hello. No problem, man. Yeah, really happy to be here. Oh. I'm, I'm super like I, I that trailer like I I didn't know what I was expecting, but I wasn't expecting that in a really good way. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it was really pleasing to look at. Yeah, no, I I am uh, I I want to get to talking about the trailer itself. I think uh, a little bit later, but first and foremost, uh, I want to actually ask you because I know that you you are. Uh, a Pokemon player and fan yourself. Yes. Uh, but I want to know your, your your quick history with the franchise, just even without ha- even before you became involved with it as Detective Pikachu himself. Oh man, I mean, this is I, it's it's a lifelong Pokemon journey on my end. Like I I own the original Pokemon Red and Blue. I got both as a kid. Um, I I what happened was I I bought the red one, and then after I finished it and I just kind of uh, um, got what I could out of it I traded my my cartridge to a friend who had blue so I ended up playing both of them on you know the old school Nintendo Game Boy the, the brick the gray brick um, and I've I've played every Pokemon game since then so it's been a long storied history um, as as far as me and Pokemon goes. You know, it's funny, that actually makes you, by definition, a more hardcore fan than I am, because as much as I love the franchise very dearly and still continue to to this day, like many others, I actually have not played every single game. I've, I've not played Diamond and Pearl, and I've not played uh, X and Y. Uh, okay. So, okay. So you have more experience than I do. Do, do you have any favorite games or any favorite creatures you know the the the, the usual kind of stuff like yeah, that yeah yeah for sure i mean i, I i've I, i've been a huge gengar fan uh for for the longest time mm-hmm. and i think really that just comes from i mean if you remember back in the day with the whole game boy they first introduced the concept of like well you can't get every pokemon unless you you trade through this cable mm-hmm. right and I, as a kid, I thought that was the neatest concept ever. So, of course, I, I latched onto the ones that evolved uh, through the cable trade. And Gengar, most of all, was just, you know, this this big kind of goofy, um, uh, kind of kind of prick Pokemon. You know? <laughs> um, he's just, uh, I, I, I loved him so much. And, and he, he's been my favorite Pokemon for, for every generation. Um Absol came close when he was first released because he was like a super edge lordy Pokemon, and I just uh, I was like, ah, that's cool. Like, you can't go anywhere without causing disasters and stuff. But um, uh, most of all, I've, I've I've always stayed true to to Gengar, and he's he's been my um, my Pokemon partner for for decades. Yeah, and we could say decades because it's been twenty years, and that is still oh, I God, still can't get over that. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, Gengar is uh, is my dad's favorite, and uh, I actually 
I found out very recently, apparently, he, uh, he had quite a bit of merch of him back in the day and um, was favored so heavily in the, in the early days because uh, uh, the, I believe one of the designers, I think it might have been, uh, it might have been Ken Sugimori, like he was one of his favorites because he was just so easy to draw all I the time. I was just about to say that. It was probably because he was so damn yeah. easy. Oh, it's, yeah. it's an easy little silhouette with a creepy ass, you know, yeah. face on him, but... Uh, just sort of fill everything in with purple and be all right. <laughs> Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and interestingly, and I'm sure probably a few people that follow your work know this, but, uh, Detective Pikachu was not your first foray into Pokemon, uh, cause before that, I know you were a looker on, uh, Pokemon yes. Generations, which you and I yes. were in together. I and, just happened to end up being two detectives in, in the Pokemon franchise. Yeah, you know, I, see, I didn't even think of that until you just pointed out, I was like, oh yeah, that's right, yeah, yeah, two for two <laughs> now, I mean, but you'll have to be Officer Jenny at some point. I'm sure you'd make a very, of course, very, of course. Very, very yeah, yeah, sexy yeah. gender bent Officer Jenny. <laughs> that future, uh, it's 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 in the bucket list. I forget. Did you do anything on Origin, or was that before? Uh, wasn't Origin? No, no, no. I didn't do anything on Origin. Okay. Uh, Origin was great, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I still sometimes watch Origin. That's yeah. that's a fantastic. Many um, many of our friends were in that too. Uh, yeah, you know. But um, yeah, I guess you know. Of course, Detective Pikachu is this kind of the the big um, you know. The, the the big main attraction when it comes to that. But uh, I guess, well, first of all, before even working on it, I mean, everybody saw the trailer, like the, or rather not for the movie, but for the for the game. Mm -hmm. And just inherently like that is a talking little stout, low voiced, grizzled <laughs> detective Pikachu. What is happening? Like, I mean, even for, you know, we've we've had some interesting Pokemon spinoffs in the last 20 years that have been all very fun and, and interesting and out there. And, you know, they, they get experimental because they've reached a point like with Mario where, like, you can just kind of do whatever with Pokemon right. and it'll, it'll probably sell. But uh, do you remember seeing that and being like, what, like what, what even was your reaction to, like, the concept of Detective Pikachu to begin with? Oh, it was great. But, like, the thing is, like, at the beginning, um, much akin to everyone else, I thought... Um, uh, the Danny DeVito casting would have been perfect. Uh -huh, you know, I was uh -huh. on that train. I was on it real hard. Um, I, I couldn't stop watching videos of them mashing the two characters together. Uh -huh. uh, so, so yeah, I, I, even before I, I got the audition, I was, I, I thought it was just the funniest concept I ever heard in my life. So just tiny, tiny Pikachu with like, you know, like six packs a day voice, you know, like sounds like he could give you tax <laughs> advice. You know, probably has a few kids. <laughs> you know, I, I feel like this is worth mentioning, by the way, because it seems like, despite the the like advent of Detective Pikachu, a lot of people, I think, actually haven't checked out the game. Uh, so, do you want to tell people out there a little bit about like what the the Detective Pikachu game itself actually is about? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's um, uh, storyline wise, it's it's pretty similar to the movie. That's the, the trailer that's been released. You know, um, this young boy named Tim. He's on a uh, quest to find his father, who has recently disappeared, or I guess not recently, but has been disappeared for a little bit. And he finds out that uh, his father used to um, work for uh, this uh, detective agency, and the detective agency uh, helps him in his quest to try to find information on his dad. And along the way, he kind of befriends this talking Pikachu, who he can only under uh, only he can understand. And in the game, uh, it's it's a lot less grim, dark, and gritty than <laughs> the movie trailer. You know, um, colors are bright. It's it's you know, it's obviously for kids. Um, the puzzles aren't too hard. Um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of like, uh, oh, look at this clue. It leads over here. Put these pieces together. And um, uh, and as you play through the game, you know, there's these things called Pika prompts. And you, you know, whenever one pops up, Detective Pikachu will either have a weird, quirky thing to say to you or give you some advice or, you know, uh, give you some insight on what clue you might be missing or just uh, uh, just uh, basically uh, show you how out of shape he is by trying to do regular Pikachu moves. <laughs> Um, that was a delight. <laughs> uh, and, and would you liken it a little bit? I guess uh, some elements of like stuff like Phoenix Wright and Professor Layton, yeah, that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, some, yeah. Something like that. Just a little easier for the kids, but yeah. uh, along those lines, yes, I agree. It, it's so funny too because I remember when I first saw uh, the human character designs. They're very different than even you know the, the usual kind of stuff that we see mm. uh, for both the show and the games. They're kind of this half and half like uh, almost american cartoon with some bits of anime features in there but like the whole uh 
the whole like design of the game, uh, which is interesting in you know the movie being produced uh, you know by an American studio first and foremost, or I guess an English speaking studio because I know a lot of it was shot in in the UK, but uh, it, it's it feels very like this is a Pokemon thing like with America in mind more than anything. Um, like obviously we had black and white, which was very heavily uh, kind of inspired by New York, but right. uh, but Detective Pikachu like like overall seems very like. Hey, this is kind of a, a big sign of like how much of an impact like the franchise had on the U.S. specifically, um, which is a lot of its you know aesthetics and everything. Which is kind of interesting right. to see like that in twenty years. It's like there's very few anime uh, um, you know franchises or, or you know, Japanese franchises, games, anime, otherwise that like I think kind of get to that point where it's like, hey, here's something like you know with an international market in mind, you know beyond right. just you know the the for just Japan. Um, but, uh, but on to actually working on it. Uh, so this, th I, I know this was a pretty long project for you guys. And of course, Kira Buckland was the lead mm -hmm. girl on it. Uh, Koi Dao, who I just met recently was, was Tim Goodman and a whole bunch of our friends were all in there. Um, so uh, I mean, I, I imagine it's probably not that much different from the stuff that we usually work on, but I'm curious if you have any like inside or funny stories or memories from actually working on the game as well. Yeah, yeah. So the the big thing for me was um I you know for my entire life and I'm sure you too we we've pronounced Pokemon one way, mm -hmm. right? Like Pokemon. That's that's how that's how it's always been and yeah. it's always how it's always I've always remembered it being ever since I was a little kid. Pokemon, yeah. Pokemon. Um I was told uh, specifically by the the Nintendo clients uh that they no longer want uh folks to say Pokemon. Um they they want Pokemon. Hmm. And and that was the biggest like that, that kept throwing me off every take. I would naturally just uh, randomly just say Pokemon again and again, Pokemon, Pokemon, and they had to drill it into me. It's like no, 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 Pokemon, Pokemon. Um, it's a slight difference, but it's there. So that was the biggest thing for me because I just kept forgetting, you know. Um, but otherwise, um, no, it was a uh, it, it was much like because a lot of the Pika prompts, you know, it, it was just more or less dubbing. Um, uh, which you know we've been doing for a while, and uh, so that that wasn't too new. It, uh, a lot of the um, uh, quick time events, however, was not too uh, uh, was not to uh, the uh, animation. So we got to play around a lot more for that. There wasn't uh, much lip flappage to to do um, <clears throat> for the cuts cutscene stuff. And, and for those of you who haven't played the game, there's a lot of cutscenes where you have like quote unquote quick time events, right? Um, but of course, these are quick time events for for little kids. They're not exactly God of War, you know, <laughs> <laughs> throwing axe quick time events or anything. It's you know, press A to watch Pikachu uh, lumber up a tree out of breath. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's funny on the note of the pronunciation thing. Um, I think shortly after Generations came out, I, I was in New York and I met with uh, a friend of mine who worked on the anime that's been she's mm -hmm. been working on it forever, and uh, she pointed out like. It, like, it was so funny that forever on the show, they were always the complete opposite, where it's like, no, 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 it has to be Pokemon with, right. with, with, the, with the E in, in that, you know, as like a, often how we do it in anime where it's A kind of pronounced. But, um, but I can still vividly remember the really early episodes where uh, it was Pokemon, yeah. uh, like, like Polka. And, uh, and it seemed like after a while, like there was an insistence that like, it has to be Pokemon. So the right. fact that that and because I think also on uh, on generations there was a little bit more free form to like whether we could say Poka or Poke. So it's it's uh, it's interesting to know that the Nintendo people specifically said like no 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 this is how it is now this is what we're right. I, I I I even remember on um on uh the uh generations um for Looker whenever he said Pokemon I I was instructed to do Pokemon really as well. okay yeah, yeah that was the first time I came across it I, I even looked at him and was like are really. Um, <laughs> I, I know you're the client and all, but are you sure? <laughs> do, do you know? Do you know this franchise? Know your job. Uh, <laughs> um, and and funnily enough, on the the dubbing to the animation too, I think this is okay to say because it's been a while. But uh, interestingly, I remember when the auditions got sent out because I read for a couple characters. Mm -hmm. uh, often when we do work for for Bang Zoom out here, uh, they'll be kind enough to to usually send us some. Uh, uh, like video material to look at for uh, in, in accordance with the auditions that we get, like the actual lines and everything. And I remember for the characters I read for, uh, some of the animation like wasn't quite done yet. It was like work in progress, uh, right. like kind of animatic type stuff, uh, which was interesting to see like, 
You know, because typically with this stuff, it's like, oh, it's done already. We're good to go. But yeah. the fact that with this, like, oh, like we're kind of, you know, not well, you know, we're still having to be adherent to, uh, you know, what's there. But like, we're not as much of a slave to exactly what's going on because it's you right. know, still kind of, uh, you know, work in progress and everything. So that was kind of cool to see that. What, was everything done by the time that you were recording or was there? Some uh, stuff no, was actually, recorded? it was mostly most of the Pikachu stuff was done. So like um, all the lip flaps were in place. Okay. Um, we had that at least, but you know when he interacts with other. Uh, <laughs> now I'm like second guessing myself. Oh, Pokemon, Pokemon. <laughs> uh, so when he's interacting with other uh, of his kind, uh -huh. uh, a lot of those were still like works in progress. Like you know there was a part where there's a Gengar in there, and it was a big blobby shape when I saw it. Um, but uh, when when we recorded at at the very least, all of Pikachu stuff was done. So okay. I at least had you know the mouth lip flaps to work with. Uh, and I forget actually, did they did they reanimate stuff for the English version, or was it was it still just a, as it was? Um, I I don't know if I have that knowledge. Like I could answer, but I feel like I'd just be kind of pulling it out of my butt. Because <laughs> because I've I've seen like a, like a handful of cutscenes, and I actually can't remember if like because obviously like with most Japanese games they don't have the time to do or the money to do that. But like right. sometimes if it's like a big budget, like, like obviously you know Final Fantasy Kingdom Hearts stuff, like they'll redo animation for the lip flaps in the English version. I forgot if, if they did that for this, but nonetheless. Um, I, I can I can only speak towards the Pika prompts. I, I don't know if they were able to do any of that for the cutscenes, but for the, uh, for the Pika prompts, uh, we were we had to stick very meticulously to the original lip flaps. Okay. Um, it was my understanding that it, it could not be changed. Right, uh, right. Okay. But, uh, and you also got to, because I, I just saw him very recently for the first time in a while, uh, was you got to work with the lovely Mr. Jamie Mortellaro. Uh, who also yes. directed uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild, and uh, he's he's a he's a super cool guy. I just I really quick story about Jamie. I, we just worked on something else together recently, and I walked in, and this was just like a day after the Detective Pikachu trailer dropped. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's when I saw you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah, and right. and hilariously, like you know, imagine Jamie. He's like got like his like laptop open in front of him. He's leaning back in his chair. I walk in, and then he's you know instead of saying like, oh hey, what's up? He's like, did you see the schmuck they got to play Detective Pikachu in the <laughs> I can't believe that and he started going on this like <laughs> Oh Lord. Well I, I guess I guess on that note, uh let, let let let's let's get to the meat of let's talk about the trailer. So yeah. um so first of all, I you know, when when people announced or uh, sorry, when 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 Pokemon Company International announced they were doing the Detective Pikachu movie, people inherently had some mixed thoughts about it. I, I for one was relieved on one thing, and the reason why is because I actually had always kind of dreaded the idea of uh, specifically Pokemon the movie. And what I mean by that is, like, I felt that if they just did, like, here's, you know, Red and Blue or season one of the anime or whatever, like, you know, the Gen 1 stuff as a film, right. I feel like it, 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 there's too much room for it to not be what people want. Even if it's, like, decent, I feel like it, it, it's it's, like, leaves too much open for, like, oh, people are going to, you know, be super critical and mean and inherently kind of you know, crapping all over this or whatever. Right. But the fact that it was something that was kind of disconnected from, like, the usual thing people think of Pokemon for, which is Detective Pikachu, there's a lot more, uh, you know, room open to interpret and kind of do their own thing with it. Obviously, it's following, you know, the some stuff of the uh, the game, but it seems yeah. like, for the most part, it's kind of doing its own thing, which yeah, I think... I, I absolutely agree with that. It seems yeah. like a really nice jumping-in point for even fans who may not be that familiar with the Pokemon franchise. Um, it's, it's a story that's set aside, like, you said just just different enough that it yes it exists in this world of pokemon but it's a very simple to follow story otherwise you know yeah. anyone could jump into it it's funny too because i was reminded about this recently uh you you've you've seen the uh the masterpiece that is dragon ball evolution of course uh -huh, yeah a, a, a real laugh and a half if any of you guys out there <laughs> haven't seen it yet but uh it's funny because you know and, and i i get my you know little Mario Brothers, the live action movie type of entertainment out of it. But, you know, okay, go with me on this. Remember back in the day when we were probably in like middle school or whatever, and like there was the, the novelty of like, oh, what if they did like a live action Dragon Ball Z movie and like they got like Jackie Chan and Jet Li or whatever? If you whittle down the like childlike single thing about the fantasy of that. It's like, I want to see Goku do a Kamehameha with, like, a big Hollywood special effects budget, right? Yep. And then, you know, Dragon Ball Evolution happens, 
And, you know, to, to be real about it, that defining moment of, oh my god, Goku's gonna do a big budget Hollywood style Kamehameha against the bad guy, and it's like the most underwhelming, like, oh, yeah. that's it. Yeah. But, on, on the other hand, you know, when you think of that same kind of childlike, what would a live action Pokemon movie look like? What w it really boils down to what would the creatures look like? How would they interact and how would they be? How would they look and etc. And I think that that alone, you know, regardless of, of, you know, people's tastes on the, uh, we'll say the rendering style of them, right. seeing the creatures do stuff, including Pikachu, but all of them really, and they had, you know, ones from all generations, uh, yeah. you know, in there, uh, that I think was the most, like, the, the thing that was is just making me excited throughout watching it, like, the hundred times I've seen it at this point. Yeah, like, um, I was I was so excited that, like, so much effort seemed to be put into all of them, you know? They could have just... They could have just gone the um the route of putting like you know your 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 general uh 3D Pokemon models into this live action movie you know and that that would have been easy but they 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 just they 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 put so much heart into each of the models I mean and 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 some of the scenes are just so beautifully shot do you remember that little scene it was very like um, blinking you'll miss it but like while Pikachu is like showing um. Uh, Tim around this like uh, uh this town uh in the back there's like a little Charmander his tail is under like the grill and they're grilling up like like um these meat skewers and yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. Just, like little detail like that is just so so nice you yeah, know I, th I think in that same shot there's like some Imolga they're like on top yeah. of uh, on top of the, one of the awnings they're just like kind yeah. of chittering around yeah like and, and and I'm very happy that it's kind of a it's a, it seems to me like a happy medium between like you know, it's not, they don't look like hyper-realistic animals, and they don't right. look like, you know, like they just popped in, like, very, very high-resolution models of, like, you know, from, like, like Go or, or you know, uh, the stadium games, that kind of thing or whatever. You know what it's like? It's like if they took uh, your generic, like, Pikachu model and married it with, like, the Rocket Raccoon Guardians of the Galaxy model. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it had a baby. <laughs> Somebody, I think one of the guys at Game Explain might have even pointed this out. It was also interesting that, like, even on Pikachu's model, he has mm -hmm. a little bit of that white tummy, which is mm -hmm. like the the really early, like, I'm talking like the beta concept artwork from like early on. Uh, like that's like a quality of like Pikachu's like design at the, be at the beginning that did, kind of didn't last through, but like oh, but it works for this you know this kind of fuzz that we're putting on him and everything, and it's like, oh that's it's like, like a nice it's a nice nod. Yeah, yeah, all these little touches. Like it, the, and and even I remember uh, what was it? They were like oh, there were like set photos that I think I forget if they got leaked or if they were like officially uh, put out, but like you know even just on the buildings, people were dissecting oh like. All of these different shops and you know locales and things are all decorated with these different references. It really feels like the people that they brought on board to write and conceptualize and do everything with this movie had a genuine like you know if not maybe like a, like a love for it. Like I'm not necessarily saying all of them. Like, oh, I grew up with it or whatever. But like there is clearly care put into making this feel like a legitimate Pokemon movie and not Every, just like a cash-in. Everything except for the pub sign that was called Nine Tails, they spelled Nine Tails wrong. Ah, damn it, they had a space in between. <laughs> <laughs> it was the one thing. Ugh, you know. They'll fix it in post, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and um, I guess, you know, this is, this is the other thing. We talked a little bit about this last time we saw each other, but um, I'm conflicted about Ryan Reynolds because... They they had mentioned they did they did say this publicly they were looking at the likes of uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson Hugh mm -hmm. Jackman Mark Wahlberg and Ryan Reynolds now of those four guys alone and maybe any other people they were looking at I I probably like Ryan the most as an actor like he's mm -hmm. he's hilarious he's charismatic he does drama he does it all he's he's great uh, but admittedly for the part of Detective Pikachu between the uh, those other three I feel like he's the least fitting in terms of, like, the grizzled, uh, you know, police-type uh, right. personality that, 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 you know, that, that fits for him anyway. But I also understand the, you know, appeal currently, especially to kids when it comes to Ryan Reynolds. So I'm like, right. well... I <laughs> I agree. It's the the marketing makes complete sense. Yeah. I mean, I, I you know I, I look at I look at their strategy. I'm like, oh, it, it, absolutely. Ryan Reynolds um, puts butts in seats, especially if he's doing his just regular Ryan Reynolds thing, right? Mm -hmm. It would have been it probably would have been more of an issue for them if they tried to get him to do like. Uh, yeah. Granted, I'm upset about it too a little bit because he proved in Deadpool two he can do the low gruff thing just fine. Mm -hmm. He was Juggernaut. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it worked beautifully. 
And so I was convinced. I was like, oh, that's what he's going to do. That's what he's going to do for Detective Pikachu. But um, it, but this this method, I, I you know, I have to admit, will probably sell more tickets. You know, yeah. it's a much more identifiable voice. It allows him a much larger range of emotions to work with the the the, the music that he knows he can sell. Um, so so yeah, marketing wise, it makes complete sense. But I am with you in that I am sad that the joke of you know this tiny little uh, cute mouse with such a grizzled like you know six packs a day voice isn't the the way they're going because I felt like that was that was one of the funniest jokes of the entire um, uh, concept of Detective Pikachu it was just yeah. the way he sounded. You know. Well, I mean, I, 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 I will I will give you a pat on the back for the fact that you you know very clearly integrated a little bit of that Devito ism. Oh, of course. <laughs> you know. Of course. Yeah. I wanted it too. You know, yeah. uh, what, what's, what's weird is, um, I don't know if I told you this or not, but like before we started recording, I had asked the uh, Nintendo clients if they had seen the DeVito memes. And they're uh-huh. like, oh, yeah, 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 of course. We, we, we love the DeVito memes. Um, but according to them, they wanted Detective Pikachu to sound like that grizzled, like the DeVito um, esque uh, uh, detective. Before the before the meme ever happened, so when it first came out, they're like, "Oh crap, they're gonna think that we chose this voice because of the meme." We yeah. didn't. We yeah. promise. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's funny because even sometimes, like on a, on a much smaller scale, like that will happen where, like you know, some new uh, anime or game will come out, and people are like, "Oh, like let me theorize, like who's gonna get this character or whatever based on you know." the archetypes or whatever like that that happens in our business a lot i think with fandom but i think with this yeah. this was such a, a larger scale because one it's pokemon and it's like you know you can go to a third world country and they'll recognize pikachu right. uh and also just because of just the weirdness of like you know now that we haven't had like ton- every every one of the animated movies has a talking pokemon in it usually by way right. of telekinesis or uh, uh not to uh, 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 yeah. Yeah, or or Meowth's tragic backstory that still persists to this day. Uh, you know, I there's part of me that almost wishes there would be something like that in the movie somewhere, uh, simply because the, like I'm happy that they have a nice uh, share of many different Pokemon from different generations. But certainly, there's a lot of uh, you know Gen One leaning towards that kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, I I guess on that note though, are there any you know. Uh, certainly the you know specific creatures but any things in the movie that you're kind of like hoping will happen um well uh, knowing what i know about the plot line of the game if they were to stick to that like at least uh if they were to keep its skeleton intact mm-hmm. um i'm really really intrigued on how this darker grittier version of it is going to treat the um uh, have you played through the game no, uh, I, I, I've not played through the whole thing. I've definitely seen a, a slew of some cutscenes and stuff, but I don't know the context of, like... I mean, this is no spoiler, because he's in the trailer. Mewtwo is in the game. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know what Mewtwo's, like, entire involvement of the story is, but I know that he's there, and right. he's not happy about something. Yeah, yeah. What he's not happy about is actually a fairly adult concept for a, a Pokemon game, which I'm surprised what was the... Um, uh, uh, kind of not antagonist but antagonist storyline of mm-hmm. detective pikachu um it, it's it's um ah, and i can't really even talk about it without spoiling the plot mm-hmm. um because it's so it's so um hardcore central to to uh, um the the culmination of the end of uh, the the game but um the 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 thing they struggle against the most in the game is fairly a gr- uh, a fairly grown up concept, and if they keep that kind of um, uh, oh, I'm trying to find the right word for it, the same kind of um, uh, uh, ballsiness, maybe uh. <laughs> maybe that's the good word. If they keep the same kind of ballsiness and translate it over into the movie and make it a little more adult, which it it should be, um, then I'm 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 honestly really excited for um how it's how the movie's going to end because it's um you know and and, and you'll having not played the game um you'll you'll see what I'm talking about when you watch the movie and uh, Mewtwo is pissed for a really good reason mm-hmm. and um ah uh, how do I keep talking about this without see, spoiling it, well here's here's a question actually cuz I I actually would like to at least play the game or or maybe watch the the cutscenes at some point just to like just, just to experience it um but uh does, does the game consist of multiple cases or is it all just one big giant case surrounding 
the you know finding the dad and then you know learning about whatever's happening with the Mewtwo stuff and everything. Right. Or, um, so it is it is multiple cases, but they all are tied together through a central storyline. Okay. Um, so one builds upon another, builds upon another, um, and uh, they start lacing together, and you, you start seeing connections. And um, so while they are yes individual cases, they they build something greater than themselves. Okay. I because I, I am curious about. You know, I'm sure this is going to do really well. Uh, like again, I think so too. Pure, purely, purely, if anything, just because it's Pokemon and you know all the things we've talked about so far. But uh, but but I do wonder about if maybe like if they would necessarily save some stuff for like if they were to do sequels. Um, right. I mean, because you know, on one hand, like having something as as large scale and oh my god as like Mewtwo would certainly be really, really cool, but I do also wonder about, hmm, or would they save that for, like, the next one or, you know, a future one or whatever if they do a franchise out of this? The, the way the way the first game ends, I could, like, they could probably just turn the entire first game into this movie if, if, they, if they really wanted to. The, the way uh, the narration uh, occurs, um, there's, there's plenty, there's plenty to do after the, not to do, but there's plenty to explore lore-wise after the game ends, and it's a perfect setup to a sequel. Um, so if really, if they just took the skeleton of the game, uh, grittied it up like they've done to the rest of it, prettied it up, I, I feel like it would translate over pretty well, to be okay. honest. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. I Because uh, I know that the girl character is not the same one as in the game. Uh, obviously, mm -hmm. Tim and, uh, and and Detective Pikachu are both both in there. Um, Ken Watanabe is in there. And Ken Watanabe as the as the police <laughs> chief, which is great. Um, you know, and actually, it's funny because not only oh, good to have a, a Japanese film actor in there, but uh, you know, if if I'm not mistaken, I do believe that that is the uh, legendary Ikue Otani as uh, Pikachu's um, actual question mark voice uh, when other people hear him as just a Pikachu. <laughs> which oh, you know, you're saying the original the original voice actress, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. That uh, is that is absolutely her. Definitely, yeah. So that 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 makes me happy, certainly. But uh, yeah, uh, one of my friends was was theorizing like, oh, like the 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 girl, like she's got like red hair and a ponytail, and she has a side act. Like, what if that turns out to be Misty? And I'm like, uh, I mean, she has a, a different name. I would that would certainly be an interesting twist and maybe a funny setup for something in the future. Who knows? But uh... Uh, I, I'm excited to see uh, CG Psyduck. I, I I like most other people was also freaked out by Mr. Mime a little bit, but it, it, he's not too bad. After enough viewings of the trailer, I, I think he's okay. I mean that that scene is funny. I, I you know it. it's yeah. great. Yeah, it's um, great. It helps the nightmare fuel go down a little easier. Yeah, dude. I, honestly, I don't care what anyone says. I actually think that the little live action Psyduck is kind of adorable and I and I want him. It is cute. It is cute. <laughs> uh Charizard is, you know, rightfully scary. Yeah, uh, that, I really like that. I like that they actually made Charizard just kind of like really intimidating. Yeah. He's a big dragon, you there, know? There was I don't know if you ever saw that there was a there was a manga that I think was based on the show specifically because it was Ash and, and the gang. But uh, they they render the Pokemon kind of scary in that one. And I remember Charizard was just straight up like, he's a dragon. He just straight up, here's a dragon with, a, with fire <laughs> on his tail or whatever. Uh, he looks very reminiscent of that. But uh, I like the, the little Bulbasaurs walking in a line in the swamp were cute. And, uh, you know, it's, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really curious to see, like, just – of the, I think we're, God, we're up to like 800 of them now. I am really curious to see just how many and which ones that they stuff in this entire, you know, hour and a half, you know, supposedly <laughs> of, of right. material. I, you know, it, it used to be so easy to just have all 151 memorized. I want to meet the person now who has like, what, what was it, 860 something? Yeah, I, th uh. I, I think there's at least 800 now in total. Um, but uh, but no, p pathetically, again, this is this is goes to show like, as big of a fan as I am, there are still some where like, oh, I is that one from Gen three? I don't remember what he's called. Like once in a while, I'll see one like that, and I'm like, ah, oh, I'm embarrassed. But you know, mostly when we're at coffee and people play Go and they're catching, you know, Crawdad Pokemon or something. Right, it's like yeah, there's, a, there's a Pokemon that looks like vanilla ice cream. Or, you know, like, I will never. I, do not, do not take a dump on my my, my precious baby vanilla <laughs> It's I a love vanilla him. ice I cream. I love man. him, and I will thank you not to make fun of him. And, you know, <laughs> no, you know what? No, no, no. I've got my answer. I want to see vanilla ice. In, in the movie somewhere. Oh just, just, just to have some inevitable scene if somebody's Someone about to, justify to lick him. this thing's existence. Like, what? <laughs> How did it evolve to become ice cream? That, that and also, and I love ice-type Pokemon, too, so I'm, I'm even more biased. And I love ice cream. What's not to like? <laughs>
Um, <laughs> God, I'm trying to think. I mean, you know, it, but, admittedly, I do want to see Scyther because Scyther's my favorite, and I think he'd be Scyther is scary badass. and badass in there. Uh, God, what are some other? What are some interesting ones that would be cool to see? Like like live action style. I'm trying to think. Like I, I I'd like to see a Klefki, to be honest. Like just this yeah, little, yeah yeah. <laughs> They're very like, tiny. They're very very yeah, very tiny. tiny key key ring thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, actually, because I'm playing through Let's Go as we speak. Uh, Voltorb and Electro would be probably also kind of scary for just the reason of like they are bombs. <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> of just. Ugh. Um, yeah, you know it. it you know what? If there is going to be explosions in this film, I bet a couple of them are going to be from Voltorb. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, especially if there may or may not be. I mean, I, I, I know Team Rocket isn't in the games, but you know, if there right. are criminals, that's you know, that's a way. Oh, uh, uh, that that would be something that'd be really cool. Like either mention of or some sort of like uh, just a little, just a little hint at Team Rocket in the world would be really yeah, fun. Yeah, yeah, or 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 any of the criminal organizations. Right, any of the teams. You know. Um. Yeah, you know, it's funny because as as uh, I guess inherently the different layers of ridiculous in that it's a Hollywood live action talking Pokemon movie and it's you know and it's Pikachu and all that like for all of those things I'm still actually really really excited about seeing this movie you know it, it's it's so weird because you know we've had uh, as I'm sure you also are aware we've had the announcements uh, the three the, the the trifecta of a live action Sonic movie uh, with <laughs> with just you know live action Eggman in there, uh, mm. followed by a live action with mostly CG Pokemon uh, stuff, and then also a fully animated Mario movie, and uh, Pikachu Don't was forget Monster Hunter. Oh, god. oh, that's right. Oh my god. <laughs> um, but I guess at least of, at least as far as those three go, as far as like you know franchises that I'm I'm invested into and grew up with and everything, it, the the order was like okay, I'm I'm. My expectations for the Sonic movie are the lowest. Uh, <laughs> Detective Pikachu is somewhere in between, and then Mario is at the highest because it's an animated movie and Miyamoto is like directly involved. So I feel like there's the least oh, is amount. It? Yeah, yeah. So I feel like with that, there's like the least amount you could screw up. Um, you know, with Detective Pikachu, admittedly, yeah, there are a couple things where I'm like, all right, we'll see how that turns out. But mm. overall, I'm I'm gonna go see that like day one, like easily. Uh, in in I think is it May or April? I think somewhere around there. Some, somewhere around there. Also, a word around town, just because you know we're in the entertainment industry and people talk about stuff. I I I've been hearing that it's screening really okay. well. Oh yeah, okay. Like people love it. Yeah, I mean, it you know. It's well. It has that inherent thing of like everybody. Well, you know, kids love the the creatures. I mean, po Pokemon is all down to kids love animals. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, adults love Ryan Reynolds, and everybody on Earth loves Pokemon. <laughs> so, yes, <laughs> you know, like I, you know, and I'm and I'm sure you probably experienced this somewhat when like you know shortly after Gen One, then it became a thing of like Pokemon is for kids. It's lame, and you know now it's all come back around and like. If you don't like Pokemon, it's like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, you know. You're like that one Digimon fans, like, mm, mine's better. Uh, yeah, it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. Wait, I'm sorry. Which is the one that is surviving and and making bajillions of dollars and everything, with all due respects? But uh -oh. uh, shout out to our Digimon fans out that's there. That's right. That's right. Dig there's nothing wrong with Digimon. No, there's guys. nothing Digimon's wrong. Great. There's nothing wrong. Bosco, if you're listening, I love you. <laughs> it's the one guy. Uh, I think that's kind of uh, all I wanted to get into. Are there well, I, any other last thoughts about the movie and and you know the the advent of the detective himself? Otherwise, well, no. I just um, I I am I'm really glad we're look. I I know I know we say all the time you know uh, geeks or nerds won the culture war. Um, I joke about that all the time, but it, it's it when when something like this happens when there's like a detective Pikachu movie, I am thoroughly um, appreciative that that did in fact happen I'm, I'm really glad we live in a time where there can exist a detective pikachu movie right like this is something that if you were to go back even 20 years and tell someone's oh by the way like you know how this pokemon game has come out there's going to be this movie in the future with this this and this and they'll be like what what who would watch that yeah 21 years later yeah it's here and people are psyched and and it's screening well and i i, I legitimately think it's going to do really well and i'm i'm really I've never been so kind of excited to be a fan, you know? 
it, it feels like a kind of a glorious time for us. Um, we'll see what, what media is like in 20, in 20 years from now, but yeah. I'm going to enjoy it while I can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll be up to, uh, uh, 2000 Pokemon, I think by that point. At, oh, at the rate we're going. Yeah. Yes. And there'll still be people who know everyone. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. They, they're, they're out there now. I, I sadly, yeah. I'm, I'm, I admit I'm not one of them, but, but yeah, I, me neither. My... <laughs> not I can't. Oh Lord. Well, I guess that's going to bring us to a close. So, uh, so thank, thanks for joining. First of all, thank you, man. Thank um, you for having. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, I, I hope, to, I hope to see you on opening night when, when we go to that, uh, <laughs> at some point. Sure. Uh, and, uh, I guess, uh, real quick, any, uh, I mean, you know, plug the social meds and all that and any other, yeah, like, sure, like games sure. or shows or anything that are, that are out that, uh, you can talk about? Faux show, faux show. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at, uh, kg.tang. Uh, I think it's not kg.tang, it's just kg.tang. Um, uh, on December 8th, uh, if you are a Toonami watcher, uh, there is going to be an anime hitting, uh, a Toonami called Megalobox. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, you can hear me as, uh, uh, junk dog or gearless joe uh, the lead guy in that so please keep an ear out for that um otherwise uh yeah a bunch of a bunch of stuff releasing later this year and um pseudo racist toys i've recorded for will come out <laughs> next year and <laughs> i will definitely be tweeting about those um but yeah you know life is interesting work is interesting i'll, I'll keep everyone up to date just follow me on twitter and and uh you'll see all the shenanigans you can also continue to draw him in uh or ho however it works in fire emblem heroes because you're what like four or five different guys by this point oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm a good number of those guys <laughs> at this point, huh? there's a lot of i just pulled two owain so i'm really excited about that i feel like i'm I'm finished now with um, Fire Emblem Heroes pulling. And I'm like, ooh, I can focus on stuff. By the way, uh, did did you just real quick before we end? Did you see Owain's sort of funny cameo in in Ultimate? Yes. Yeah, it's just literally yeah. he's a spirit attached to Krom yes. and just makes him taunt every two it's seconds. Great. I'm like, you know what? That, I, I can buy that. I'm all right with it's that. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> Starts off with a killing edge, but he has to taunt at every opportunity. Oh, uh, Lord Almighty. All right, well, uh, on that note, everybody, if you haven't checked out also Detective Pikachu, the game, please do, because then you'll, you'll be in the know when the movie comes out in another, like, six months from now. But um, that'll do it for now, so please do follow KG on, uh, on, on, on Twitter and, and otherwise, and uh, look out for him on Megalobox, premiering on Adult Swim very, very soon, alongside lots of other good stuff. And um, uh, leave some comments in the video here uh, about your thoughts on the Detective Pikachu movie trailer, what your hopes, dreams, aspirations are for when the movie comes out, uh, any fun memories of having played the game. Uh, co compliment KG, <laughs> because. Uh, and uh, look forward to, uh, if you're not too busy, probably playing through Smash Ultimate for a billion hours. Uh, the following weekend, uh, I will be uh, putting up a new Curb blog for a review of the 21st Huh. Pokemon uh, animated movie, The Power of Us, which I'll be going to see actually tonight, uh, or actually I think in the afternoon, like uh, just after this is going up. I'm time traveling right now. Nonetheless, uh, yeah, look forward to that. I've got some other cool stuff planned for uh, for Pokecember, so uh, keep it tuned, and we'll uh, catch you all later. Bye.